I've been having trouble with this. Counterbore in these jobs. The tapering bought it out. Smaller towards bike. With this big boring bar. I don't have the trouble with the small boring bar. If you see this, it's got minus 65 for a reason. When we when I clock jobs up to it, this is out of line. Minus 65 thou, minus 20 thou, other way, zero to the top. I have to clock them to this. What's out of line? And I also think it's not straight, it's at an angle like this. When I get these jobs, when I get this job finished, I'm going to run the clock along the bowling bar. See how far that is. I thought I'd just explain. The small bowling bar is only three inch diameter, and it will move. The woods will to support it, but this is a six inch bar, and it won't move. That's tapered 38 now. Because I think this is out of line, it's putting too much pressure on this wood and wearing it, wearing it away. This steel is 4130, 50 inches long. I'm opening the bore up from 200 millimetre to 220. So I suppose a 40 thou tolerance isn't that bad. But it is to me. And I'm not having it. Let me put this on and show you the size it go. the woods that's entered now to support the tool but as I say it's wearing out on the right hand side I'm going to finish this job and then I'm going to run the clock along the boring bar just to see how far out it is I hope you're following so far see the difference how the wood bone that thickness to that thickness that is on the opposite side I've done 22 of these jobs every time I have to shim the wood out on this side so that that's the clock on the boring bar I'm going to run that from, from this side to the front. Let's see how much out it is. It's gone off at clock, but it's 120,000 out of the line really annoying right so what are my options I can either cut the head off set this boring bar in the chuck and weld it back or a bit more difficult to do I've got a bridge port And I can alter those. 
guess we're on the try first. Well, before I can do anything with it, I have to open these up from 270 to 290. Let me get these things out of the way. Let me show you what's happening. The wood's kept size there. So you can see how the wood's worn. I've left six million, but I've finished cut. So I'm going to let it go in 6 inch then measure what it tapers at then I'll have a rough idea how to alter this so that's tapered 8 thousandths of an inch over 6 inch the base is 15 inches long I need to bring this front over roughly 20 thou to get that lined up then that will no longer be 65 it will be 85 so I'm going to bring it over 20 thou and take it over take it over that way 40 thou. This is getting complicated. Just one more thing to add. This is not only this way and like that, it's also high. So I am able to mill off of the off of the base because it will it not only will it move it over it'll drop it to let me get these done and then I'm gonna get it set up well will I ever get it done I've got these to do now that's the easy bit look at these I've got to do also follow me I've got all those to do as well before I can set about it it's not just those Look at that lot. I'm gonna have to make this in two parts, so I'll get back to you when I can finally get around to starting them. Well, here I am, six months later. Still haven't been allocated time to do it. They have too much work and they need to keep this machine going. I bought this, turn it round and run the other way because it's tapered too much. It'll be sized at both ends and small in the middle. Just wearing the wood away.
so I'm going to cut the head off. It's, it's too much work to mill it and I expect to get it right. If I cut the head off and weld it, I know it will be right. Let me get the head cut off. Some of you may leave a comment suggesting why not try shim there and shim this side to twist it. I've already tried that, doesn't work, it just raises. It just raises the head higher on the bed. It should work in theory, but it doesn't. That's tapered exactly six thousandths of an inch. It won't taper anything when I finish with it. I'm on a mission. This is definitely my last one. You see? Just won't let me get on with it. Nine inch hole into a ten inch hole. I'm taking three quarters of an inch out on the first pass. Leaving a quarter of an inch the finishing the cuts fluctuates in between 8 and 12 millimeter the ball's not concentric with the OD but just listen to the guts of the machine oh dear that's pushing it It's Scottish this machine, so there's not much guts in it anyway. If it had been a Dean Smith and Grace, it would have been singing down. That's tapered from the start to the back, 12 thousandths of an inch. Acceptable for horning. Right, it's marked out where I want it cutting at an angle. Hopefully it's the last time I have to use it. Well, it is the last time I'll be using it to clock two like this. Minus 65, minus 20 on the other side, zero at the top. Hopefully it will be zero all the way around. Off it goes to be cut. I hope that's clear enough. So, like I said, I have four of these to do. I've just had a delivery. That's exactly how I wanted it. So I'll finish these first and then set about it. This is EN24. The best steel for making these trepanning tools. And this is a good length, hopefully. If we can, we can keep the cores 
and I can make some new trepanning tools from them. Quarter of an inch to break through. Look how nice it chips. Beautiful steel. It's, a, it's supposed to be an equivalent to 4145, but it's not. This is much better. I'll just let it break through. Nice little bit of rumble just as it's joining. And that's it, it's gone. I'll just carry on with these and then set about that till. So while that's running nicely. I can set about this, preparing it for welding. I'm going to grind all the edges off around both pieces. So that's all the prep work done. I'll just have a check on the trepanning another one bites the dust Well, some of you may be wondering why I put this at an angle. It's because it needs to move to the right and down. If I'd have cut it straight, it meant the ax the axle may not have cut enough gap for it to fit. Some of you may be wondering how can I possibly get this in a line before I weld it this is the last piece in here and then I'll be setting up so I'll be able to show you I've checked the base to make sure there's no high lumps on it where it's been knocked about over the years. Just so it sits flat. Ideally, it wanted milling. I've checked the bed also, and there's a few high points on the bed where it's had various jobs dropped on it. Obviously, I'll just be, I'll just grind those off. Anyway, this is the last one. And it's going to break through. Then I can set up. That's gone a, bit, a little bit quiet as it breaks through. Sometimes makes a grumble, sometimes goes quiet. I can just hear a little grumble now. 
there it's gone right I'll get this out and strip it all down before I strip all this down I've had quite a few comments asking how I remove the core I'll make a video on that there's a roughly six or seven different ways sometimes they get stuck in the tool sometimes they go down the bar I'll make a video on that first I'm going to strip this down completely and then inspect the bed and get the bed ready so it's all stripped down ready have you managed to guess how I'm going to do it yet? I've took the eye points off the bed I've marked the bed where I want to assemble the, the rest like a clue Chuck's set at 6 inch the boring bar is 6 inch and that's got a dollop of grease in it I'll just carry on setting it up and see if you can get it this would have been a great job for Brian Brian at DC Block channel he loves doing anything like this have you seen what he's done with that? Have you seen what he's done with his fork truck? Turn it into a dragster. Right, watch how I assemble it. Stage one. Stage two. It's reading zero, minus three, minus three, the other side, minus five on the bottom. So I've, I've took the average, put the zero to the top. Stage three, ready for welding. My suspicion was right, I've held a, a straight edge on the sides and the front and it was twisted. I need to get the weld around. I'll be building the weld up slowly, letting it cool in stages. I want to add two plates to the side so it's not all weld but this has got a, a rubber band saw so blade made in Manchester I'll do it on Miller quarter inch plate a bit easier that's where the plates are going I'm going to take it off now and weld it on the floor I'm not very good at welding upside down on here. Well, my milling skills are better than my welding skills.
Right, what colour to paint it? This mushy pea green or navy blue Sheffield Wednesday colour. So that's it, finished. All I need to do now is try it. I'll wait for the paint to dry first.